So what's your invention? Bring it up here. A bubble wrap phone case. <laughs> awesome. All right. <laughs> Hello, it's Marissa from Marissa Mom. If you are new, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. If you are not yet a subscriber, hit that subscribe button as I upload a new video every single Friday. Also, I am going to be doing Vlogmas this year because apparently that's what YouTubers do. So I'm going to do 12 days of Vlogmas and upload a new video every second day starting December 1st up until December 24th. I'm actually really excited for today's video just because it's what I'm really passionate about and what I've been through. So today's video is about losing the baby weight. But before I dive into five tips for losing baby weight, I just quickly want to tell you what my certifications are and why I'm even qualified to give you this advice. I have my bachelor's in kinesiology and health studies. I majored in human kinetics. So basically that means I studied the human body in relation to movement. I am a CSEP certified personal trainer. I have my precision nutrition certification and I have taken a pre slash post natal fitness specialist course. It's kind of like a tongue twister. Post natal, post natal fitness specialist course. I don't know why that's so weird. Mm -hmm. I don't have this now. And last and not least, I am a mom. So I've been through it. I put on about 45 pounds through my pregnancy. And then after birth, I was still about 25 pounds heavier than I was pre-pregnancy. I did lose that baby weight. And I also had to rebuild and relearn my body so that I could compete in track and field again. However, just because this is what I found that works for me. There's no guarantee it's going to work for you. And at the end of the day, we have to remember, we are all different, our bodies function differently. And the best advice I can give you is just finding what works best for you and your current fitness level. Okay, now to the fun part. I'm going to count down from five to one. Of course, saving the best five. tip for last. Oh, it doesn't go five, one? Five, four, three, Two, one. So starting with number five, we are going to start with food. So there's a ton that can be said about food. I'm going to try and make it very basic and simplified because it's very complex. There's so much to it. You're gonna hear many different things, but the best advice I can give you with regards to food is to not go on a crazy diet. There are so many diets and supplements out there that it is really easy to see, oh, this worked for this person, so I'm gonna try it too. There's no guarantee it's going to work for you. And most of these diets are not actually sustainable lifestyle diets. Basically, the one thing I want you to get out of this is moderate your food, pay attention to it, but don't make drastic changes where you're cutting out a bunch of stuff because you're not gonna be happy, it's not gonna be a sustainable lifestyle change, and you're probably gonna end up reverting back to old habits, so the progress you've made on this crazy diet, restricting all this food is just gonna go to waste anyways. So what you can do instead is, is start making small lifestyle changes. So that can be anything from switching vegetable oil to olive oil, switching regular table salt to pink Himalayan salt or sea salt, instead of having ground beef, having ground turkey. Little things like that that can add up to helping you have a healthier lifestyle in general, and of course adding in you know, those fruits and vegetables. One trick that I found to make me eat more vegetables was mixing it with my rice. So I have often like a smaller portion of rice and a lot of vegetables mixed in. Number four. Of course, we're gonna talk about exercise. That's extremely important. If you've just had a child, of course it's not that the biggest deal to go out and run a full 100 meter sprint or be on the treadmill for two hours running a marathon. No, that's not what it's about. The exercise I'm talking about is just getting out and moving. So I started working out about one month postpartum just because I had different goals set for later in the summer. But for me, going back after that one month, I was only going maybe three times a week and I wasn't working out super intense. I was just basically getting my body moving and doing basic exercises because I would taken so much time off. So if you're someone that is new to the gym and you have a friend that goes to the gym, it's awesome to go with them. But keep in mind that if they've been going to the gym for a while and you are new to it or you took time off from pregnancy like I did, 
just know that you don't have to keep up with your friend. You just going and getting to the gym and starting to do some movement is awesome in itself. Also, if going to the gym and say lifting weights or just going on the treadmill is not for you, there are tons of fitness classes and it doesn't necessarily have to be the Zumba class or a class just at your local gym. Your municipality also will have a lot of programs at the community centers. So with the city of Regina, I actually was in a baby and me aqua size class and it was a ton of fun. Elijah was probably about eight months at the time that I started it. So I wish I would have started it sooner, but it was so much fun. He sat in this little boat and he would just kind of like paddle around. And of course I held on to the boat to make sure that he wouldn't float away from me, but I just did my aqua size and there was the instructor there and there was a bunch of other moms. Of course right now with COVID, it's gonna be a little bit hard, but once the world starts, open up a bit again, look into those programs because there were tons of other ones. I number Number three, ooh, three. <laughs> Number three, exercise intensity. This is also super important. When you are first starting out at the gym, you don't have to be going super intense. Make yourself comfortable first with going there, otherwise you're going to hate it. Once you are a bit more comfortable and you're in a bit of a routine, bump up that intensity. So to see results, you need to push your body outside of its comfort zone. Again, this is a very broad topic, and there's so much that goes into it. So I'm just trying to simplify it and whatever you are doing, make it a little bit harder for yourself. So if you're walking on the treadmill for 30 minutes and that's starting to get really easy, either bump up the speed so you're going faster or add an incline to it. And it will work your body a little bit harder. Our bodies, they adapt very quickly. So as something gets easier, we need to shock the system a little bit. I can guarantee that you will see results by making your workouts a little bit more intense from what you're doing now. Number two, scheduling. So find what works best for you and put that into your schedule. This really goes for any goal or any plan. If you write it down, you're more likely to stick to it and achieve it. When I first started working out, I was working out at like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And that's just because that's what time worked. We were like busy during the day. We had come to Toronto to visit Tuan's family. Elijah was a month old, so Tuan was up at night usually, and he would do the night feeding. And I found like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night was the only time I really had free. So I'd go to the gym and I'd be there for 30 minutes to an hour. I only started out going three times a week and then slowly bumped it up as my body started feeling a bit better. This is how you make a phone, Kate, look, look better. Oh, with the bubble wrap. Yeah, because you can cover your cream with it. Oh, wow. You popped a lot of bubbles. I popped a few, but I left them for tonight's Dariah. Oh, nice. You can show them, hey? Yeah. And finally, number one. The most important tip is actually a condition called diastis recti. If I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. According to Tzvan, I suck with the English language, so I hope I'm saying it right. But basically, that is the separating of the abdominal walls. So our stomach or our abs are normally like this. With pregnancy, they get separated a bit because your stomach has to go forward with the uterus and the baby. Some women, their abdominal muscles never fully go back together. I am going to post a short tomorrow just explaining how to check for diastasis recti because a lot of women don't know they actually have it. When I was getting my like weekly checkup by the home nurse, when I was getting my weekly checkup from the home nurse, she actually told me that I had it and so it made me do a lot of research on it and what it's all about. But basically, when it comes to diastasis recti, you can do exercises to naturally bring it back together. Some women's will go back together on its own. Some women it never does. So if you've noticed that you have a little bit of that pouch still um, and it's hard to get rid of it, if you are someone that does work out, you probably have diastasis recti where your abdominal muscles are a little bit separated. So if you do notice that you do have this condition, what you wanna do is start doing some exercises to like pull those muscles together. The further apart they are, the harder it is to pull them together and for some women, they actually do require surgery. So when I checked, mine were actually quite far apart. Um, they were thinking I might need surgery for it, but I was very determined and I was like, nah, I'm doing this on my own. So it took about a month to two months for my abs to fully come back together. So the whole first month after having a baby, I wore like a waist trainer and it just basically pulled everything in. And I did wear that pretty much every single day for a few hours a day. 
And then once I started working out a month later, I wore it only when I was working out. And I noticed it did help bring my stomach down a lot quicker because I still looked like I was like six months pregnant. So it helped bring that down. And then it also pulled those muscles together. And I was checking basically every week to make sure that they were going together and not pulling further apart. You wanna avoid any exercises that are putting pressure on your abdomen. So your stomach will start to look like it's like coning, like a dome. Those are bad because it's too much pressure and it's gonna eventually push it out like this, right? So it's keeping the muscles further apart instead of bringing them like this. Sorry, I keep covering my face. So some common exercises that can have that effect are planks, uh, crunches, and just some twisting exercises. You can do a lot of single leg stuff, so laying on your back, and instead of doing both legs going down for leg raises, you can do one at a time, because you can focus still on pulling your stomach in, making your back flat, not letting it, your stomach have that dome effect. Those are my five best tips for losing the baby weight. And all these things I found helped for me. I worked really hard to get to a point where I could run track and field again because that was a big goal of mine. And if you actually want to see examples of exercises that you can do to help improve diastasis recti, leave a comment below. I will get back to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next Tuesday for the start of Vlogmas. Bye.